Hey guys, it's your Pex Boxing Friends. I'm Kelsey. This is Rachel. Rachel, there seems to be confusion about what does the term lineal mean? You know, because all of a sudden ESPN is pumping out all this stuff about lineal heavyweight champion Tyson Fury. Um, let's talk about the concept of lineal boxing champions a little bit so we can maybe educate some people out there who might not know and we can talk about it ourselves to ensure our own understanding as well. Right. So boxing can be a little bit convoluted because we don't have a single overarching organization yeah. that manages a champion. There's no like you might have in the NFL. In the UFC, there's no there's there's no confusion about who the UFC heavyweight champion is. It's Stipe Miocic, right? Okay. Because the UFC does their own title belts. Yeah. But you say UFC. I just want to say there does exist a broader MMA and there are some smaller organizations. It's just that UFC right now is the big thing, right? Well, it's, yeah, and the people in UFC fight each other for the UFC heavyweight title. And boxing, it's Is Bellator not, it's, a part of UFC? No. So Bellator, Bellator has their own promotion. champion, yeah. right? There's a, yeah, and that Bellator heavyweight champion is Ryan Bader. Right. So I'm just saying if we use the term boxing, boxing is a very broad term, whereas UFC stands for an organization. So it'd be if the equivalent in boxing would be if Mixed we said, um, or yeah, if we said MMA, or to take it back the other way, if yeah. we said WBC, right? Yeah, kind it's just that they're different models, so it's really no use to get into how different boxing and mixed martial arts are. But the point with, is, is that it's a little bit convoluted in boxing. It's overcomplicated. There's an overcomplicated championship system in boxing for sure. Let's talk about the concept of the lineal champion. Yeah. So lineal. what does that mean? Because lineal. we know Wilder is a heavyweight champion. He's the WBC heavyweight title holder. Andy Ruiz is a heavyweight champion. He's a unified <laughs> title holder, and that means that he has more than one of four major alphabet organizations in boxing: WBA, WBO. WBC and IBF. There's a fifth one that sometimes gets included in that, the IBO. That is not one of the four major title belts. I don't know. It's a promotional tool people use. Um, it's based out of Florida. I'm sure this has nothing to do with if you're a fighter and you won. Not, if I won the IBO title, I'll be like, I'm an IBO champion. I get that. I'm just saying for historical purposes, as far as boxing goes, there's four major sanctioning organizations. On top of that, we have two other organizations in boxing that are media organizations. We have the Ring Magazine champion. Um, they give out a title belt as well. And we have the Transnational Boxing Ranking Board that tracks titles as well, world champions. Neither one of these two, although they're sometimes confused with this, I've interviewed the people, Springs Toledo and Doug Fisher, neither one of these two, Ring Magazine or TBRB, claim to crown or track lineal champions. So basically the lineal champion was made up in, when during the proliferation of the alphabet organizations. Somewhere around the late 70s or 1990s all of a sudden we had all these different alphabet organizations crowning different champions. And so you needed a way as a boxing fan or maybe as a historian to say yeah but who's the real champion of this division? Who's the lineal champion? Who's the man that beat the man? Right? Who's the guy that is the real champion. And so people came up with the concept, people in general, came up with the concept of the lineal heavy or lineal boxing champion. Now, that's all well and good, okay? The, the problem is, is that for lineal championships, it is something that exists, and it is something. If you think Tyson Fury, for example, is the lineal heavyweight champion of the world because he beat Vladimir Klitschko, who is considered in general by historians the last, the, the, the last guy that was lineal heavyweight champion. If you still consider him that today, that's great. You have absolutely the right and, and, and uh, well wherewithal to do that. If you don't, that's okay too, because it's not really a real thing, right? It's a made-up thing. It's a thing that, that people made up. In truth, the last, if you, if you wanted to track the lineal heavyweight championship of the world, and if you wanted to say the first heavyweight champion was uh, all the way back the turn of the century when John L. Sullivan and gentleman Jim Corbett fought for the first time with gloves on, right? Before John L. Sullivan was the bare knuckle boxing champion. They wore gloves for the first time. That was the first heavyweight champion Corbett won that. If you want to claim that lineal, lineal lineage all the way back to him, the last real lineal heavyweight champion, when the line was broken, was all the way back after Gene Tunney 
defeated Jack Dempsey because Gene Tunney retired undefeated. So nobody ever beat Gene Tunney, okay? But, you know, that's so people... Oh, so a lineal champion, like, has that, like, glaring flaw in it. There's, yeah. That if somebody retires while they're the lineal champion, then there's not really a way to have a replacement. Right, and it actually had happened a little bit before Tunney um, with uh, James J. Jeffries had retired undefeated, but he came back out of retirement to fight to fight Jack Johnson, right? Because it, that's a whole other story we could talk about someday. But he came back, Jack Johnson won the fight. Anyway, so we had the lineage. We had a lineage for a decently okay time. But therein lies a problem. There's not one group of people that have the claim or even can, or even can claim that we are, are the people that decide who the lineal champion is, right? It's mostly you have to go with, well, the majority of people think this guy was number one. So what happens is how do you feel a lineal boxing champion? Well, if you have a consensus number one guy fighting the consensus number two guy, then a lot of people will say, well, the winner of that becomes the new lineal champion. The problem is that this is all just, there's no like organization specifically. Now, I've seen people that have created things, like there's a lineal suddenly pop, but just because a guy creates a website and claims to have this authority doesn't mean Jack. I could create a website tomorrow that decided to do the same thing. It's not something that will ever really have formation. It's made up by fans for fans for the purposes of tracking who's the real champion, right? Right. The best well, we can. And to say, like, the reason why we have these things, it doesn't mean that at some point in the future, any one of these things can't be the way we really track a champion. The problem in boxing is that for years, decades, we have been in this place of where everything's kind of messy. Nobody has a singular authority to make these decisions. So yeah, a guy can make a website that uh, gives us the, the evidence for the lineal boxing champions across different weight classes. But that doesn't like hold water. It doesn't hold any water. Because who's this unless guy? This guy's making his own rankings up. We like, come why does this and guy we, get to decide? an authority comes in place that can say, hey, we're taking this and this is going to be the way that we do this. But it would have to be an authority that would come in place in boxing. And we don't have that in boxing. So if you looked at like MMA, like you can look at specifically UFC, which seems to be the biggest like organization out there for yeah. MMA. So people tend to generally look at that. In boxing, we have organizations all with like an equal amount of pull or authority like in there, so we're, we're still just in a messy place. That's why we have the four major like alphabet belts. That's why we have the ring. That's why we have TRB. TBRB. TBRB. <laughs> why they came in because the ring got a little like questionable with when Oscar took it, Golden Boy took it over yeah. and then helped to like, it was like a checks and balances, right? Yeah. So we have both those organizations. Then you have the lineal thing. We have all these things because we're kind of just in a place where there's just too many authorities. So I'm a supporter of the concept of lineal boxing champions, right? And there's lineal boxing champions in every weight class. So Tyson Fury is a lineal champion. Most people think at heavyweight, uh, at junior featherweight, the lineal heavyweight, the lineal junior featherweight champion is Guillermo Rigondeaux, right? And he's been for years. Nobody ever wants to talk about that. So um, my concern is that people throw around terms without knowing what they mean. ESPN, I'm looking at you. You're doing a terrible job, and let me tell you why. If you want to be in a like, if you want to be a supporter of the lineal concept, that's great. But the only person I've heard you say in, about anything about being a lineal champion is Tyson Fury, and that's only because you gave him a hundred million dollar contract. Right. You're a you media mean, organization. You're causing more confusion than there needs to be. So just be especially fair. since you have access to the uh, broader. Uh, sports fans who are not um, hardcore boxing fans. You have access to building the audience for boxing and you are doing the very thing that reduces the audience yeah. for boxing, which is confusion about which, what the hell is going on fair, in boxing. To be fair, all the people, including the PBC, including probably the people on the zone, they're all you're all doing the same thing. Right, you're all because promoting this is stuff where at boxing's detriment when you your own things over the good of boxing. Right. It's a good of boxing versus self interest. 
And we have a lot of separate organizations that work really hard to serve their own self-interest instead of the good of boxing as a whole. Yeah. So there you have it. That's just some information. The good, I think, about the lineal We got champions. a history lesson on the lineal championships yeah, for the champions. heavyweight division. For any division. Lineal championships are well, you great. You gave us the history lesson for the heavyweight That's division. right. Lineal championships are great if it's just another piece. It's kind of like CompuBox. Okay. CompuBox is great. As long as you give it its order due, which isn't very much, it just gives you a, a piece, piece of, of the puzzle. picture of a bigger picture. Um, unif winning a world title belt, one of the four major world title belts, winning the Ring Magazine title belt, or win winning a championship per the T Burb, or winning a little, these are all good things, but they have to be put in their little boxes um, yes. and shouldn't be over, uh, over, overly focused on the way you, ESPN, have been doing with the lineal championship. And the way that other people do when they pretend like other world title belts don't exist, other promotional organizations. I'm not a fan of it. What I am a fan of is you, my best boxing friends, who come and listen to us talk about our uh, opinions, if you will, about yeah. different things. And we love boxing. We know that following boxing isn't easy because of crap like this. I'm going to leave a link in the show notes that explains, if you want to read it, the overcomplicated history of um, the, the world championship policies and boxing it's a good read it's for gambler.com i wrote it about a year or two ago and so i think it has a lot of information there and thanks for like commenting, and subscribing we're on our way to a thousand subscribers and when we we are declaring we're declaring lineal champions of youtube <laughs>